Hello everyone, welcome back again to this session. In this session, let us study regarding the concepts of wastewater treatment systems. The term wastewater treatment system mainly refers to the flow charts or flow sheets you might have observed in the case of the water treatment where you have a screening or a bar screen followed by aeration or maybe the sedimentation tank. After sedimentation you have either coagulation, flocculation or in the case of coagulation and flocculation aided sedimentation tank. Further you have filtration as well as even the disinfection process further carried on to the distribution reservoir as well as the systems also. Likewise here the next part comes that is related to whatever the water converted in terms of in wastewater it accumulates accumulation of the wastewater is collected through the conveyance system conveyance system is furthermore transformed or the wastewater is transported into the outfall from the outfall the wastewater is again lifted up through the aid of the pumps from the pumps whatever the wastewater is subjected for either for the screening sedimentation coagulation come flocculation normally screens are provided sometimes before the aid of the pumps what happens if the screens are not provided therefore it aids to the clogging of the pumps from the pumps the efficiency also reduces and the load on the treatment becomes invariable in nature. Thereby we need to take utmost care related to the treatment of the wastewater or even in the case of the designing of the wastewater treatment systems. Let us get to know or what level of the treatment is required is mainly based upon the characterization from the characterization you need to analyze it after the analyzing what degree of the treatment to be provided that is majorly discussed in this particular part of the module 3. Module 3 comprises mainly related to the primary treatment so we have preliminary treatment treatment Second one, primary treatment, primary treatment and then third one we have secondary treatment, which involves mainly the biological process dominated here, here and tertiary or advanced treatment system. These are the stages of the treatment or the degree of the treatment normally adopted take a preliminary treatment what does it mainly refers to with the aid of the flow diagram we have a sump or a pump house bar screens have a grid chamber the partial flume
pump and pump hose, screenings, screenings, followed by the grid chamber, we call it as a grid chamber. The flume which is provided, we call it as a partial flume. or velocity control device along with this we have the effluent discharge we call it as effluent discharge Here, in the case of the preliminary treatment, normally whatever the wastewater collected from the various houses arising or emerging into the trunk sewer or the main sewer, it relays upon for the outfall sewer, where at the end of the discharge. From the outfall sewer, what happens? A sump or the pumping unit is attached or installed there along for the collection of the waste water and to pass it on through the next set of the systems. Here mainly the preliminary treatment is given in order to remove the floating organic matters or maybe any of the suspended matters which are larger in nature or the sizes. Which are larger in the sizes upon passing through the screen which tries to block the larger floating particles and allows only the coarser part of the material or maybe the finer part of the material only to pass through it. That we call it as a bar screens. That is why there is a changes in the flow we call it as an approach channel. Approach channel is normally provided and along with the coarse particle which are either floatable still again if they are present or suspended in nature the suspended particles are settled or maybe the grit material which are present they are settled through the phenomena of the sedimentation action through the aid of the chamber we call it as a grit chamber these kind of an operations process which is involving in nature hold together we call it as preliminary treatment preliminary treatment preliminary treatment so mainly preliminary treatment consists of a sump as well as a pump house bar screens which drives off the large floating suspended matters maybe a log of wood you can observe the picture here log of wood or maybe any plastic sachets which are available which are larger in nature any of the rubber materials clothes and all, all of them are trapped there and only the lesser part of the material or the particle sizes tends to travel and further the grid chamber. Grid materials or the chamber is mainly adopted in order to settle the heavier particles having the specific gravity more than 2.65 through the aid of the sedimentation action where the detention time normally given is in the range of 2 to 5 minutes. The particle settlement it is 0.2 mm size of the particles and the detention time normally it is in the range of 2 to 5 minutes. 2 to 5 minutes. Getting the point clear here? Next partial flume is provided in order to control the flow 
as well as even the velocity also. We call it as a velocity control device where the diverging part is here you have a converging part and a mouth portion here as well as the diverging part here. Okay, converging as well as the diverging part followed by any other further treatment. If it is required then it is let off or else if any treatment is given then it is subjected to the next stage we call it as primary treatment. Thereby once again I am explaining preliminary treatment system consists of a sump as well as a pump hose followed by screening grid chamber as well as velocity control devices through the effluent discharge or sent for the further treatment. Mainly larger floating particles are trapped there by allowing only the coarser particles as well as finer particles to there. Next coarser particles which are having specific gravity are settled through the aid of the sedimentation action by providing the detention time and the velocity of the flow. You can also determine with respect to the distance. So distance if you wanted to determine or T detention time it is the length of the channel with respect to the velocity you can determine what is the detention time. And here the partial flow is provided in order to regulate the flow whatever the abrupt changes of the flow come across in this stages has to be regulated thereby providing in a regular manner. Now certain cases we have oil and grease skimming tank oil and grease we call it as a skimming tank. oil and grease skimming tank. For the floatable particles which are not dissolvable in water that basis of this difference in the gravity can be skimmed off easily by the method of flotation process, froth flotation process you might have observed. Due to this changes in the specific gravity they are lighter in nature, they tend to float, it can be skimmed off through the surface scrapper mechanism and they are dried up and reutilized for different purpose. Getting the point clear, this is related to the primary tree, uh, sorry, preliminary treatment system. If the preliminary treatment system consists of a primary sedimentation tank, primary sedimentation or we call it as a sedimentation unit, or a settling tank, we also call it as We also have a different names, primary sedimentation unit, settling tank or we call it as a clarifier also. Both of the words are one and the same, then we call it as a primary treatment system. Let us get to know the flow diagram related to the primary treatment systems. primary treatment system. Primary treatment system again it is provided with the sump and pump hose. You have an approach channel We have an approach channel here. Have a bar screens. From the bar screens later on to the grid chamber again you have a partial flume you 
in order to regulate the flow from the partial flume you have oil and grease skimming tank provided along with the oil and grease skimming tank we have a new unit call it as primary clarifier sump and pump house this is approach channel screenings we shall uh, discuss all these things in a uh, when we take up on all these topics grid chamber collection of the grid material grid scraper oil and grease skimming tank and primary sedimentation tank which is subjected for further treatment or for the dispose so in the primary treatment system along with the preliminary if you add up the primary sedimentation tank we call it as a primary treatment system of the waste water normally primary treatment system of the waste water it removes 60 to 70% of the particles along with the floatable materials since they are passed on through the bar screen still some portions of the floatable materials are remaining and the settleable as well as suspended particles also remains there thereby reducing 60 to 70% of the settleable materials of the solids along with the removal of 30 to 32% of the organic solids okay they are not completely removed so 60 to 70% of the fine settleable solids they are fine settleable solids because they are removed in the grid chamber 60 to 70% will be removed in the primary sedimentation tank whereas 30 to 32% of the organic suspended solids are removed we cannot just clarify and state that completely removal of the organic solids because it is rather difficult because any prior treatment is to be given then only it has to be subjected for the disposal or for the further treatment process this is how we give a relationship between the primary as well as the preliminary type of the treatment system getting the point clear for here same process with the addition of the primary treatment system you need to make a important note the organic settleable solids or maybe in the form of the organic suspended solids they are not removed completely only through the aid of the biological reaction the organic solids are removed that means the matter or the solid portion containing organic substances they are to be removed only through the aid of the biological action that's why we come across the next stage of the treatment known as secondary treatment secondary treatment why here since large floatable matters are trapped here coarse materials are trapped here 
skimming tank oil and grease operation are done it is optional it is optional whenever required you can uh, utilize it later on primary sedimentation tank further either for the treatment units you can go for disposing them this together we call it as a primary treatment system next stage we have secondary treatment Secondary treatment mainly consists of either the biological process which are attached in nature or maybe suspended growth process. Any of the treatment plant if at all if you go there you may have the conventional part of the biological treatment it has either a trickling filter or maybe the ASP the activated sludge process. Both of them have their own pros as well as even the cons also normally suspended growth process are adopted wherever the larger area are available whereas the uh, attached growth process normally employed in the case where the area availability are quite constrained in nature you cannot go for further development or the area if you need to occupy after the establishment of the treatment plant over a certain period of years it becomes much more costlier. Hence, in that cases, the secondary treatment process containing attached growth process are employed. Okay, let us get to know what the secondary treatment process with the aid of the, the continuation part itself only. Here, you have an influent from influent from. the primary sedimentation tank followed by aeration tank you can also look upon for the picture here This is secondary treatment with biological uh, aided that is suspended growth process, suspended growth process, suspended growth process. What happens here mainly? Earlier I have mentioned that is chemical or maybe the biological reaction takes place. If at all if you wanted to remove any heavy metal content or maybe the organic matter and all we can remove either through the aid of the precipitation also but in addition to this through the aid of the microorganisms that are present in the wastewater already they are present they are to grown in a rapid manner in order to 
reduce or to convert or oxidization of the organic matter into the simpler forms. When it is converted in terms of in carbon dioxide or the simpler forms, normally CHONS, remember the term carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur. These are the fundamental organic uh, constituents together, either with a different set of the combinations. Hydrocarbons play a very important role here. In order to degrade the complex set of the compounds into the simpler one, microorganisms plays. That too only for the biodegradable organic matter. What about in the case of the non-biodegradable organic matter, then they have to be separately treated. Because they may contain even in the primary part of the sludge. Here, let me explain the flow diagram and then each unit I will explain it here. Primary sedimentation process in a unit operation through the separation of the solids from the water takes place to a certain extent. And later on here you can see the aeration tank. The term aeration means the process of addition of oxygen to the water or air in contact with water or water in contact with air media. We have like an aeration tank. The tank where the waste water gets collected and with the different intervals of a time, say for example like 4 to 8 hours, the batch of the water is treated and some portion of the water is treated and some portion is let it off. This particular process we call it as a plug flow type of the reactor or the conditions. Aeration tank, it mainly consists of an diffuse aerators or maybe the surface aerators. Look upon for the feature. Diffuse aerators means normally they are provided at the bottom with the diffuser ports and the oxygen is released based upon how much amount of the oxygen required by the microorganisms they need to maintain the proper dissolved oxygen level because you have studied what is the BOD as well as COD content in order to reduce the BOD content it plays a very important role simply you cannot discharge it it causes a obnoxious water also organic matter which are biodegradable, which are non-biodegradable, still they are resistant there. They have to be converted through any other chemical means through the aided of the precipitation process or the scum formation or either through the sludge treatment after the settling. That kind of the settlement we call it as secondary settling plant. Whenever the degraded part of the organic matter still if it contains some amount of the suspended solids again they are separated by the sedimentation process which results in much more whatever the finest suspended or the organic solids they are converted and slightly heavier in nature then they go for using either the alum also that we call it as a tertiary treatment or the advanced treatment here keep it in the mind where phosphate removal can be enhanced through the usage of the alum through the precipitation process which also results in the reduction in some portion of the BOD maximum here you can reduce it. Whatever the sludges that are settled at the bottom of the PST that is a primary sedimentation tank as well as in the sediment, uh, secondary sedimentation tank what happens they are to be collected in a separate channelized portion or the separate pipeline networks are to be provided. We also have the portion of the waste has to be that is the portion of the sludge are again reintroduced into the aeration tank why what is the nature here in order to see that whatever the microbial growth that takes place it has to be in a log phase or at least to at a saturation phase what is that log phase as well as the saturation phase we have a diagrammatic representation let me uh, convey it in a later senses. That portion of the waste has to be again recirculated, thereby the efficiency of the treatment or the BOD removal takes place because already remote portion, again you are recirculating, sludge some portion has to be wasted off. Completely you cannot let it off here, some portion you need to waste it, that we call it as a sludge retention time as well as sludge return portion of the line we call it as a recirculation the ratio we call it as recirculation ratio in the case of the aeration tank as well as in the case of the trickling filters also so this secondary portion of the sludge either subjected for the treatment earlier i have stated biosolids and all 
because it may contain pathogenic or even maybe the non pathogenic they have to be reduced below the permissible limits then only it can be utilized for the treatment purpose or maybe utilize it for any other purpose otherwise no it cannot be used unless and otherwise treated in a careful manner the function of the secondary sedimentation tank is to reduce much more settlement uh, that is the concentration of the suspended solids which are present here already due to the aeration of the air bubbles what happens the microorganisms tend to present in the waste water it breaks up the organic compounds or the solid contents these organic solid contents they tend to form and heavy in nature uh, based upon the air settlement and the suspended of the suspension of the microorganisms which aids removal of the remaining colloidal or maybe the suspended matters this particular phenomena can be observed in the case of the secondary treatment plant normally this aeration tank can also be replaced by stabilization ponds aerated lagoons aerobic or maybe anaerobic lagoons or maybe the biological contactors so we call it as rotating biological contactors now let me show again in the case of the trickling filters i hope you have understood the concept of this let me draw the diagram we have a secondary sludge this is trickling filter primary sedimentation tank trickling filter secondary sedimentation tank either for the reuse or maybe for the disposal conditions or for the treatment for the sludge that are arising again from the primary and secondary sedimentation we have sludge treatment facilities sludge treatment and then finally it is subjected for the disposal or maybe for the reuse what happens in the case of the bar screens as well as grid chamber the huge amount of the solids that are generated they cause a nuisance or the obnoxious odor thereby they are collected in a separate Uh, alleys or maybe a separate vehicle comes with the containers to collect the residues from the bar screen and even from the grid chambers also they take it off away from the outskirts of the area and it can be used as a landfilling because landfilling is the last option which is important in the case of the solid waste management also whatever the solid waste that are generated that has to be taken it for the landfilling process or if it contains some of the organic matters then and there also you need to utilize it either for the decomposition or the composting process it has to be fine screened after drying and then utilize it for the composting as a manure either you can have here in the case of the secondary treatment in trickling filters this is the attached growth system as earlier i have stated that attached growth system means biological treatment is employed where the microorganisms grow on a nutrient media or a media where the nutrient in the form of the waste water is available for them based upon this in the trickling filter media mainly consists of the different boulders of the sizes that are arranged where the larger portion are at the bottom supported uh, the base supporting material as well as the smaller size that are arranged in an orderly manner whatever the waste water coming across it is distributed uniformly trickles down 
and aerobic as well as anaerobic process of the decomposition of the organic matter takes place by the liberation of the carbon dioxide water. In the anaerobic conditions there is a liberation of the methane as well as the hydrogen sulphide. So, in this particular cases anaerobic digestion taking place if it is exposed to the normal atmospheric condition methane ok fine because there will be a certain set of the air dilution that is a separate topic air dilution or due to the dispersion phenomena it happens. If at all if the methane gas is present at the bottom itself only, if in the case any of the ignitable or the reactable materials are placed or come in contact with that it may lead to the explosion. That process has to be checked and in order to curtail the emissions of the methanes and all separate gas portal systems are provided in the case of the either composting and all ok sludge digestion also there methane gases are generated. So, there is a new topic where we can also recover the methane that are emerging from the secondary sludge as well as conversion in the various utilizable form we call it as a carbon sequestration as well as storage facilities. This phenomena we call it as a attached growth system totally microorganisms grow the waste water trickling down are broadly intercepted where the straining happens the larger particles which are greater than the voids and all they stuck there itself only we have a straining sedimentation action takes place electrolytic base exchange process the charge neutralization process also takes place along with along with microbial action. This has to be come across in the case of the trickling filters you will go for studying in a next set when we discuss related to the secondary set of the treatment in model number 4 because we have lots of theories to discuss related to the filter medium. This fundamental things I have taught you later it will be easily helpful for you people. Hope so you might have understood what is the secondary treatment aided with the suspended growth system or maybe the attached growth system. Combination of suspended or attached growth system we call it as a rotating biological contactor. See the above picture we call it as rotating biological contactors. Earlier I have shown even the case of the aeration tank. Let me show once again aeration tank how it is and related to the trickling filters and finally combination of the biological contactors. Now, in this regard the secondary treatment matters if the removal of the much more advanced treatment is required wherever the residual impurities are to be removed so that the quality of the water has to be utilized in the case of any secondary or maybe for the primary usage itself only in the case of the Singapore and all I have told where the waste water is treated and recirculated in the society there they are using the reuse water that is why water is slightly costly in nature and we are utilizing it judiciously. See these are the disparities when we come across in from one country to another country or from one nation to another in a worldwide situation cases. People are striving hard to get the water and from the faraway places. This waste water treatment if it is given in a proper manner either recharges to the ground earlier I have stated the disposal of the waste water or into the dilution basis thereby the water table is also getting re-established and regenerated and you can make a complete balanceful nature even with the usage of the artificial environmental system or the techniques ok keep it in the mind. Now, let us go to the different uh, flow charts that are normally provided ok. In the case of the tertiary treatment much more residual contaminants trace organic contaminants trihalomethanes or even the carbon adsorption process normally they are uh, taking or quenching in a rapid manner. The process that are generally taking place I wanted to have a quick references. We have 
The case is like a granular media filtration, the residual suspended solids, biological nitrification and denitrification process for the removal of the nitrogen, air stripping, biological aided chemical process also earlier I have mentioned and even the ion exchange process for the removal of the inorganic solids, organic as well as even the toxic compounds also. These toxic compounds or the inorganic solids are to be removed by the aid of the ion exchange or through the resin process. We also have a special category of the reactor known as anaerobic sludge blanket reactor and fluidized bed type of the reactors. And in the upflow anaerobic sludge blanket type of the reactor where the waste water flows from the bottom to upward process passing through the filter media and stays there by the phenomena of the reactors taking place in a fluidized condition. We also call it as a fluid as a bed reactor. Anaerobic sludge blanket means the portion of the thickness layer is formed upon the surface above the surface of the media. They call it as an anaerobic condition where there is a oxygen content is absent and the bacteria tend to flourish in that nature by converting all the different organic matters into the simpler form. And this is also the application part in the case of the tertiary treatment process normally employed. In order to the sludge disposal condition means we have a sludge digestion tank, sludge drying beds, sludge thickening process, sludge pressing process. These are the certain set of the things normally employed where the remaining portion of the solids because wastewater treatment is not only by handling of the liquid waste, even the solid waste that are generated are to be taken care. That is a making a complete sense, that is making a complete sense. Otherwise, no, it is not at all a complete in nature. Whatever the treatment plant that you are going to take it. It is better if it is not used, go for using it in the case of the landfill. Diagram for treatment plant useful for small and medium sized cities. Let us take the flow diagram. By knowing this process, you can get to know we have approach channel for medium and small sized cities. approach channel and then a raking mechanism there is also usage of the raking mechanism or the tool further we have even the case of grid chamber emoff tank grid chamber, Imhoff tank. Now it is easy for you to get to know. Imhoff tanks are the baffle type of the sedimentation tanks. Normally employed for the next you have a dosing tank for the flocculation process. We have a dosing tank. With this we have even trickling filter filter drought mund type of the tank drought mund tank open sludge drying beds open sludge drying beds This is for the medium and the small size of town cities where you have approach channel raking mechanism instead of the screens the raking mechanisms. Comminators are also utilized. Comminators means where the larger portions of the materials are converted and they are separated through the aid of the screening mechanisms. And emoff tank, dosing tank, trickling filters, drawman type of the tank for the remaining portion like a secondary sedimentation tank. We have an open sludge drain type of the beds where the dewatering of the sludge takes place and the remaining solid portions are dried up for a period of 15 days or 20 days later on they are scrapped off 
and taken for the utilization as a manual. Next, load treatment plant for the large sized town or a cities. In the case like a Bangalore and all, uh, it is a large city. Then we have flow diagram. for large cities towns or cities you have first one is related to sump well you have sump well and then approach channel They are narrow in nature, approach channel. Screening chamber, after the screening next is grid chamber, primary settling tank, Then you have either a biological suspended or maybe the attached type of the growth process. Activated sludge tank. Activated sludge tank. And even secondary clarifier. sludge digestion tank as well as at the last you have sludge drying beds now this diagram becomes much more easy because already you have understood you have understood the concepts what is meant by sump well? Approach channel means channel which is coming relatively towards the screening chamber as well as even for the grid chambers. Partial flumes are provided. Primary sedimentation tank means mainly related to removal of the fine suspended, sorry, the fine settleable particles also. Suspended particles are remaining. They are further removed of by in this case of the secondary clarifier or the sedimentation tank after the biologically enhanced type of the treatment by the reducing of the organic matter. The remaining portion of the sludge that are arising from the primary as well as the secondary sedimentation tank, they are subjected for the sludge drying beds, sorry the sludge digestion tank which is anaerobic in nature where the supernatant liquid are collected. This is taking place for a period of 6 to 8 months sometimes or maybe in the case of the 3 to 6 months where there is a complete separation of the solid as well as the supernatant liquid. The supernatant liquid are taken out. A vent is also provided for the escape of the gases as well as even the methane gases, the separate vent portion are provided. Along with the methane gas, some other gases or mixtures are present. They are to be purified and that can be utilized for the generation of the electricity also. And the sludge drying bits. Thereby, economical part or maybe the conventional type of the treatment, we have this. If you need to have a graphical or maybe the diagrammatic representation, you can see the picture. In this picture again you have the sample or the screenings, screenings followed by the grid chamber. After the grid chamber you have a secondary sedimentation, sorry, you have oil and grease skimming tank, primary sedimentation tank and next later you have even the Activated sludge process or maybe the trickling filters followed by secondary sedimentation tank. From that the sludge collection system, sludge thickening process and sludge digestion or maybe the sludge stressing and then the effluent disposal takes place. The dry sludge is disposed through the aid of the beds. We call it as sludge drying beds. Okay. So with that aid you have completed related to the flow diagram related to 
the large size of type of the towns. Okay. So, simple diagram if I wanted to write it here, you have the screens, approach channel, yes, you have it. I can write it in the middle. Approach channel, you have a sedimentation, uh, it's a grid chamber, screenings, grid chamber, primary sedimentation tank, aeration tank followed by secondary sedimentation tank and then to the sludge thickening process, we call it a sludge drying beds. screening screens grid chamber oil and grease skimming tank primary sedimentation tank biological treatment unit secondary sedimentation tank sludge that are originated from here they can be treated we have the sludge digestion tank we have again the recirculation here and then further sent either for the two process one is for the further treatment or maybe for even the disposal before the disposal it has to be dried we call it as sludge drying bed so these are the representation related to the screens followed by approach channel or the pumping station, grid chamber, oil and grease skimming tank, primary sedimentation tank, biological treatment unit, secondary sedimentation tank, sludge digestion tank followed by sludge drying bed with the disposal conditions. So these are the set of the treatment units normally provided. We call it as a conventional treatment unit system. If at all if you need to have an advanced treatment of the system, here it goes on. Provide the carbon adsorption, disinfection process or maybe from the secondary sedimentation tank go for the filtration and thereby go for the disinfection process. These are the set of the treatment. If at all, if the quality of the water required to be more relative to the using or for the drinking purpose, then it has to be subjected for the disinfection or again usage of the reverse osmosis as well as the nanofiltration and ultrafiltration process comes into the picture. These kind of the treatment we call it as tertiary or the advanced treatment. Why we cannot employ here because amount of the solids or the dissolved solids if they are maximum in nature they have to be removed only by the aid of the membrane separation process. Still the secondary wastewater or treated wastewater contains large amount of the total dissolved solids. You have removed only the suspended. What about the total uh, dissolved solid constituents that has to be removed only by through the adsorption process, ion exchange process, then it can be removed. That membrane filtration process along with the charge utilized, there you can have the maximum efficiency of the removal of the solids and whatever the water obtained, the effluent, it will be same as the drinking water. Like that particular standards they are going to bring it. Imagine how it would be. This is the need of an R and it is the order of the day that you need to go for the treatment of the wastewater to provide a sustainable development in nature. Okay. Clear with this set of the concepts. So with this, let me wind up this section and kindly practice all these things which are essential for you people. If you have any doubts, you can ask it or you can drop a comment in the chat box. Please do check whatever the concepts that are covered once again and thank you one and all.